So hello people, how you going? This is Glenn, and today, well, we're just going to have a look at some Filipino banknotes. As you can see here, there's Central Bank of the Philippines, so you know what country it is from. Uh, one peso banknote, and this one was issued between 1949 and 19, um, 1969, so about 20 years. And this banknote is actually in English, and it has Apollinario Mambini, who was the first Prime Minister of the Philippines in 1899, after the revolt against the Spanish, and before the United States invasion. So, down below, we have two signatures. We have one who is of uh, the President, the other one, uh, the Governor of the Central Bank. And this is Fidel Marcos, who was the dictator between 1965 in 1986, as you can see, it looks pretty similar to United States banknotes. On the reverse, you have the Barasayo Church, um, which is I think it's in Manila, Manila. Yeah, and that's about basically. It has no security features, so no watermark, uh, no security thread. And here is a. Uh, the one peso from 1969 to 1972, uh, when it's replaced by a coin, has same signatures as well. Central Bank, and it has Jose Rizal, who was an independence rebel who was executed by the Spanish in, I think, 1897, roughly. And um, this one is a, like a purplish blue color. And on the reverse, we have the Declaration of Independence in 1898. So, uh, that's all of that series I have. Here is another banknote of the 1949 series. Better condition. Uh, quite a plain banknote, but the whole collection is actually quite good. Another one peso. This one's pretty damaged, so if you want to sell this one, good luck with it. Just put it in a junk pile. Okay, so now I have the, well, the previous series. This series here was actually demonetized at the end of last year. So you cannot actually use them or change them at the central bank. Actually, maybe the central bank will actually take them again. But you can't spend them. So we have the 10 pesos. There is actually a 5 pesos, but I don't have it. That, that was replaced by a coin. Uh, thinking, oh, I can't remember, 1999. And this one actually was replaced by a 10 peso bimetal coin as well. And this one has a uh, Apollinario Mambini, who was on the previous um, uh, one pesos, and Andres Bonifacio. So it has their name down below. It has um, the uh, Katipunan organization. This is probably their charter. And it has a logo of the central bank. On the reverse, it has the Barasayin church. And these people are part of the Oka Katipunan organization. So, looks like they're doing it like a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, cutting each other's hands for the cause. And beautiful church, you should actually visit this church, it actually looks quite nice. So, here I have another 10 pesos, 2001, uh, that one's 1999. So Philippines banknotes have the date on them now, before 1998 they didn't. Uh, they just had uh, the year in the central bank uh, logo. So here is uh, the 50 pesos. So this is not the lowest banknote, the lowest is 20, but I don't have that in this uh, denomination. So here you have uh, Mr. Ramos, who's another president. Uh, is it Fidel Ramos? I can't remember. And this one has two letters. On another one, uh, this one here, it has one letter. 
So when you come to the Philippines, and you see it either has a two letter prefix or one letter prefix, that's pretty normal. I've seen that on a lot of back notes, but this is really the only one that has one letter. And uh, star bank notes, they actually have a star in place of the first letter, and it indicates that the banknote is a replacement. So, this one has um, Sergio Osmera, and quite interesting is that his first language is probably Cebuano. So, obviously, he was not a native Tagalog speaker, which is, um, well, that's what I found about him, whether it's true or not, I don't know. And he was uh, the president from 1944 to 46. And on the back, he has the former legislative palace, which is now the National Museum in Manila. So quite a big building, quite good as a museum, because it's quite large. And it has a security thread, as you can see. And the watermark is always uh, the individual who is featured on the banknote. So. Here I have different years, 2000, 2012. As you can see, between 2000 and 2012, the color of the um, security no, serial number actually changed from red to black. And that occurred on all the banknotes. So let's look at the next one. We have a 100 pesos. And this one has Manuel Roxas who was uh, the president from 1946 to 48. That's the year that he died. And uh, yeah, he looks like a nice, beautiful banknote. Also has the American and Filipinos flag. So obviously the Americans and the Filipinos actually have a close relationship. On the bank back, he has the uh, central bank building. So this is the old one up here. And this is the new one. Well, it's probably pretty old now. And the watermark. And the security seal. And it also has a security thread as well. And I have different dates. So, 2000. So, this one has no date. So that's actually before 1998. And here we have well, two 2000s. XT. CV. And ooh, another 2000, this one's in better condition, AU. So you can see the central bank building a lot better there. Beautiful. And 2011. Uh, and this has Corio Aquino. Oh, no, not Corio Aquino, her son. Uh, Beningo Aquino. Who is the signature on this one? Uh, Estrada, Joseph Estrada, he was a funny bastard I reckon, uh, Joseph Estrada as well, yeah, Estrada, uh, uh, Ramos, and then we have, oh I don't have the 200 as well, pity, so we have the 500, and this has the Filipino flag, he has a, oh, Beningo Aquino. Now he was the husband of Corio Aquino and he was actually assassinated as he got off a plane in 1983. Um, well, he was surrounded by security guards, so I'm just wondering how they actually got into assassinating. And we have actually two security threads, so we have one in the paper and one that actually is partially in the paper, segmented security thread. And we have a watermark, and this probably also has UV as well, which high denominations pretty usually do. This is signed by Aquino, and faith in the people and faith in God. So, this has uh, English on it. So, and it has the Philippines worth dying for, which he did, because he was actually in opposition to Fidel Marcos at the time. And on the back, it actually has the live of uh, Mr. Aquino. So it has him working for the um, the newspaper, the Manila Times. It has him, I presume this is him as Mayor of Concepcion. Um, 
him studying the now pay later system and also governor of uh, Tarlock and this is the looks like it, there's two buildings there so it's probably one in Concepcion one in Tarlock and I'm not too sure what these two soldiers are so maybe they're related to the first cavalry of the United States which um this had something to do with the Korean War so that's what that banknote is about okay and the highest denomination we have in the Philippines is the 1000 peso so we have three individuals on it on this time and all these people here um, were executed by the Japanese so here we have um, Jose Abad Santos who died in 1942 and he was uh, the 5th Chief Ex Justice of the Supreme Court and he was executed because he refused to cooperate with the Japanese we have Vincent Lam who was a brigadier in uh, the well the Philippine American Army and after the Japanese invasion he actually became a resistance fighter and was captured and was executed in 1944 then we have uh, Josefa Lanes Escorda and uh, she fought for women's suffrage and she founded the Girl Guides and all that and probably she was also a resistance fighter of the Philippines she was executed in um, I think January or February 1945 uh, which is very sad actually Japanese they love to uh, get rid of their enemies at the time and here we have uh, the eternal flame probably for people who died uh, defending the Philippines like the Australian eternal flame which represents the same thing so the war mark is the same there's two security threads segmented so what's the segmented one probably has uh, 100, 1000 yeah 1000 so that's the denomination Probably also has the um, uh, initials R and G P for the uh, central bank. Also, on the reverse, we have the Banal Rice Terrace, which is in northern Luzon. So, if, if you ever go to the Philippines, you should go visit this. It actually looks better than on this banknote. And also, we have the Manungul Jar which is a burial jar found uh, to be dated between 890 and 17 BC so it's about 2.8 thousand years old and a traditional hut as well so Philippines banknotes actually full of history and full of beauty so here we have the new banknotes these are actually quite better and are more colour separated so as bank notes of the Philippines are the same size uh, these ones uh, allowed those who are illiterate to actually distinguish between the denominations better so I only have the 20 and the 200 this one has uh, Manuel Quezon who's the president of the Philippines between 1935 and 44 and on the reverse we have the Rice Terrace at Banavu, so it's the same as this one, except just different perspective, and it has a Philippine civet or palm civet here, which um, uh, have you ever heard of uh, mouse coffee? Well, it's these animals here that actually eat the coffee beans and shit them out. And in Cantonese they call it mousey coffee, so mouse shit coffee. But it's actually these animals that produce it. And it actually has a map where this is Luzon. So this terrace is actually up in the north of Luzon. And the 200. The 200 pesos has Doyo Stato Macapag. Well, yes, I'm sorry that I did 
destroyed his name. But if you could make a video showing how to pronounce them, that would be great. And it has the uh, uh, the uh, Barasayan Church and the House of Independence here. And it also, all new Filipinos banknotes have the coat of arms and the new central bank logo. And all old banknotes have just the old central bank logo, but no coat of arms. So if you don't see this on the banknote, don't accept it because it's uh, not legal tender anymore. And also has a large numeral here. All of them are pretty much the same. And it's a security feature. So that's basically how you tell the old and new banknotes. So don't get confused, people. And on the reverse of this, it has a oh, Tazia, which is a type of uh, monkey. Also has the Bahol Chocolate Hills, which is a group of about oh, 1,268 to 1,776 hills. Mostly covered in grass, but do have palms and... Um, tree ferns and that's located on Cebu so Cebu Island is there so Mindanao is there Luzon is there and quite a beautiful banknote design I reckon these new ones are grouse see and also if you notice it actually has English back on it as well because English is actually a national language of the Philippines and a lot of people uh, there are a lot of tourists go from the Philippines, from Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, uh, Australia. And the most common language they would use is English. It doesn't matter about their first language. Because English is, uh, well, one of the most, actually the most common language around the world. So, that is the Philippines banknotes. Sorry, it's a bit long, but I had quite a few banknotes. So... If you'd like to leave, leave a message down below uh, telling me what banknotes of the Philippines you have and what you like about these banknotes, that would be great. And also another thing is that these two series were actually produced together between 2.10 and 2.13. So as you can see, these two are dated 2.12, 2012 because uh, they had a problem producing these banknotes, so they had to keep these ones in production uh, until they figured out what the problem was. Obviously they did, and then they got rid of these ones, which is great. So, I'll leave a link down below if you'd like to purchase any Filipino banknotes on eBay. They have a wide variety of banknotes to be, uh, buy, and they're beautiful. So, don't be shy. Get into collecting Philippines banknotes. They're great. Maybe I'll, after doing this video, I'll actually see if I can get some myself. So, thank you very much. Have an awesome banknote collecting time, people. Bye-bye.